Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I greet you this morning, my sisters and brothers in Christ, in the name of our God and Savior, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the fifth Sunday of January, the 30th of January in 2022. I can't believe that we've gone all the way through the month of January so quickly. Time waits for no one. Not one of us can stop time. And so we've been given a beautiful day that we might be part of it, that we might impact the world around us for the cause of Christ. This is also, we're celebrating the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, after the wise men, the Magi, went and visited with baby Jesus and presented Jesus and Mary and Joseph with all of these gifts, those wonderful gifts. We're celebrating the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. We're going to move uh, pretty quickly in the month of February and uh, toward the end of February into a bit of, of ordinary time, time where we can uh, just have a, a relaxing moment and then we'll, we'll move into um, that, that time right before Easter, the Lenten season and all of that is coming up quickly and we'll talk about that in uh, some coming Sundays. But I have a couple of announcements to uh, share with you this morning, and I'd like to uh, get them started right away with um, um, our, our Thurman Brisbane meal that's going to take place on February the 3rd. We're going to go down to the Brisbane Center and share in a meal down there, so be praying for that. I believe uh, Sister uh, Jerry Ann Cooper hits that ministry up, and she's going to uh, take some folk down there and and share in, in that and bless uh, people's lives. We're about blessing folk here at Trinity. Also, um, we continue with um, the 1st of February, the uh, Knit and Crochet Gang will be here. If you love to knit or crochet, uh, Sister Annette Ashton is heading up that ministry and she invites you to come and be part of that. Also, our Bible conversation. So our Bible conversation, our Bible study time, happens from uh, 6.15 to 7.30 each Wednesday. And this time we're literally studying uh, Philip Yancey's book, The Jesus I Never Knew. It's a wonderful study. You can pick it up anywhere, Amazon, any of the, the bookstores, Christian bookstores. Come be part of that ministry. It's by Zoom. And so really we kind of say there is no excuse. You know, you can sit in the comforts of your own home, you know, eating and drinking and being merry and come and share in, in our uh, understanding of how we understand the scriptures, how we look at the Bible, because the Bible is relevant for us in the 21st century. If it's not, we ought to go do something else. I ought not be preaching as well, but it is. It has relevancy for us today in our time. Also, the chancel choir will meet here on February 3rd, on Thursday, uh, February 3rd. They will be here and, and rehearsing if you'd like to sing. Uh, Sister Branda Lee Cooper is asking that you will come and bring your voices. Uh, also, the United Methodist men will meet here on February uh, the 8th. As a matter of fact, they will have an in-person meeting here, and they will also provide a Zoom link so that we can... Uh, so that, that those of you who are United Methodist men who'd like to take part but don't want to come in person, you can be also part of that endeavor. All right. Those are all the announcements that I have. If you have something you'd like to share with us, by all means, reach us here at trinitykg at verizon.net. And you may also reach me personally at kevinelmore at vaumc.org. I love hearing from you. I hear several, from several people during the course of the week. Uh, get messages of encouragement, uh, the whole nine yards. So by all means, if you'd like to reach out to us and you have something, share that piece with us and uh, we'd be more than happy to share it with our faith community. Amen? Amen. Let's share together, my sisters and brothers in Christ, in our call to worship. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 71 and verses 1 through 6. The writer writes this for us this morning. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. 
Deliver me, my God, from the hands of the wicked and from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and all-wise God, to you we give glory, dominion, power now and forevermore. You've blessed us with this day that we might come together and worship you. According to your word, you desire, you're looking for those who will worship you in spirit and in truth. Why might we be counted among those who worship you in spirit and in truth? Allow your Holy Spirit to move among us today. Allow your spirit to uh, gather our hearts together that we might uh, be on one accord. As we sing, as we pray, as we preach, we pray that all this might come together as a worship experience, and that it might come up to you as a sweet smell and aroma, that it might permeate your nostrils, and that because we have worshiped together, that you might pour out your blessings on us today. Lord, have your way in each of our lives. Bless our time together like only you can. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you will join with me in our opening hymn, our opening hymn of praise, my sisters and brothers in Christ comes to us today from the faith we sing. Hymn number 2068, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Join with us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Man, I love that song. I love you, Lord. Uh, it, it has some wonderful lyrics. This is our time, my sisters and brothers in Christ, where we get to, uh, get to talk with the young people. I love talking with the young people. We have, uh, I say it again and again, my, my darling wife and I, Karen, we have uh, young people in our family. We have several young people, and it's just a joy to converse in, in many instances to uh, uh, talk about life and what life means to us as Christians. Our, our topic this morning uh, uh, comes to us, and I was having this conversation with a clergy friend, and uh, he and I were talking about uh, the scriptures that we were going to use today for uh, preaching from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And uh, it, it talks about this being the love chapter in the New Testament. And so we were talking about, uh, he and I were, were saying, hey man, if, if the Christian, if the church could focus on this one particular chapter, if the church would, would, would put this particular uh, chapter into practice, the church, the body of Christ, you and I, it would be a different world. 
And that's where I got the sermon topic from. I, I wanted to write uh, the, the topic that I was going to use was uh, the greatest of these. But he, in, in his prophetic voice, said to me, man, it would be a different world. And that's what we want to talk about this morning, a different world. The scripture, my young brothers and sisters, come from uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And we're going to pick it up uh, in verse uh, 4 through 13. Uh, and this is what the writer, the Apostle Paul, says. He says uh, in verse 4, love is patient, and love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes and always perseveres. Verse 8 says, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put away child, put away, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, and then we shall see face to face. Now in part, now I know in part, then I shall know fully even as I am known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for uh, this time that we can share together, that we can talk with our young people, that we can talk about life and what life means, what love means, and how you have uh, given us your everlasting love. Give us insight and wisdom now that we might be able to speak Bless us with your, your power that we might be able to share together. Lord, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. A different world. When I was coming up, and uh, I was born in the 1960s, in the early 60s, and uh, when I, I, I became a lover of music, just I listen to music. Right now, I have uh, uh, on my, uh, on my uh, uh, cell phone, I have Pandora. I'm not promoting Pandora, but I have Pandora, and I have commercial-free Pandora. And each month when I get my, my bill from Pandora, $4.68 or somewhere in that neighborhood, it says I have listened to somewhere around 1,200 to 1,400 songs a month. And that, that's been my average for some time. Someone says, hey, man, that average is out to about 40 songs a day. And so I, I do that. But I, I, when I was uh, coming up, in the 1980s, there was a, a group that I used to love called Foreigner. And they, they're still around, some pieces. I believe the original uh, member, one of the original members are still around. But they had a song that was a, a worldwide song that had come out. And the name of the song was, uh, I Want to Know What Love Is. And when you, uh, when you, you hear the lyrics, you, it, it is so... Uh, uh, draws you in, so emotionally ties you in. And so what, the, what I understand, my young brothers and sisters, ha happened was that the, 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 the writer of the song, who was Mick Jones, one of the band members, he had uh, got this understanding from his own life that he was struggling through love, that he, he wanted to know what love was. He couldn't figure out what love was. He, he was in broken relationships and all of this sort of stuff. And one night this song lyric came to him, the, the name of the song, I want to know what love is. And so when we look through and understand the background of it, it was uh, kind of a, a, a superficial love. The, the love that we uh, distribute in most cases is, you know, emotional love, emotional love. It's kind of love that we, we get into relationships with and we break up and all of that. And so he wanted to know what love was. And so when you read the lyrics of the song, you get an understanding that, man, he is, he is really searching. 
But this is what he did. He went and he found a choir, uh, a, a gospel choir to sing background. And that's why the song is so enticing. That's why it's so emotionally drawing because he had a group of, of, of gospel singers to singing background music. But he never discovered what real love was all about. In our lesson today, my young brothers and sisters in Christ, the Apostle Paul gives us this picture of what love is really about and how we could have a different world if we as believers would practice this particular passage, this particular chapter of love. We could have a different world. The Apostle Paul and the Greeks, they had several different meanings of love, several different definitions of love. One of the definitions that they had for love was called uh, storge. Now that's the relationship, the love that a parent has for a child that many of us as parents have for you all as children. And then they had uh, the, the word phileo, Greek word for love, which was uh, the love that we have for our brothers and sisters in Christ. As a matter of fact, the city of Philadelphia gets its name, its nickname from the word, the Greek word for love, phileo, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And they also had the word for love called eros, which is the kind of love that a husband and wife have for one another, or boyfriends and girlfriends have for one another. But the love that the Apostle Paul talks about here in 1 Corinthians is agape love. That kind of love that we get from God, that kind of love that God has for us, no matter what condition we find ourselves in, that kind of love, my young brothers and sisters in Christ, that says we love for no reason. We say sometimes it's unconditional love. That's what Paul talks about here. That's what would make a different world if we as believers in Christ would practice this type of love. This is what he says. He gives us two negatives and eight, two, two positives and eight negatives in verse four through six. He says, love is patient and love is kind. Two positives. And then he says in, in, in the next few verses that the, these are eight things that love does not do that would make us have a different world if we practiced them. He says, love does not envy. Love does not boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. It records no record of wrongdoing. It delights in, in the truth. It does not rejoice in evil. And so he gives us all of this so that we can practice and make a different world. Then he says here in verse 7, it always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. So when someone in your life is not using this type of, of action, and love is an action, is not using this type of action, my young brothers and sisters in Christ, then you know what love is. You know that, that this is not right. And the Apostle Paul says to us that love never fails. In verse 8, he says it. Love never fails. Everything else is going to disappear. Everything else is going to fall away. Everything else is going to not happen. But the one thing that will remain is love. And he says it because love is of God. Love, God's very nature is love. And so the Apostle Paul helps us to understand this morning how we can have a different world if we practice agape love. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you for being our almighty. We praise you for the gift of everlasting love, the kind of love that you demonstrate to us and the kind of love that we as believers are able to demonstrate to the world around us that we might have a different world. Lord, we love you. We praise you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we uh, share together this morning in God's Word. God's Word comes from us, to us this morning from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. And it comes to us from uh, chapter 13 and verses 1 through 13. And so we are going to share in the entire chapter. We won't uh, preach through every single line, but uh, this morning I believe that this chapter uh, uh, love is indispensable, speaks to us as believers in Christ Jesus that we might begin to turn the world upside down for the cause of Christ. 
The Apostle Paul writes to us, if I speak in the tongues of, of men or humanity or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection in a, as in a mirror then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall fully be known, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. For a few minutes, my sisters and brothers in Christ, I want to talk from the topic, A Different World from the topic, A Different World. Might we pray? Gracious God, thank you for life and for the gift of eternal life. Thank you for the joy of salvation. God, bless us now with your spirit. Allow your Holy Spirit to open our hearts and our minds that we might receive your word with gladness and joy. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Speak to us today through your Holy Spirit that we might be able to enjoy love in the way that you describe it, that we might be able to love one another in the way that you have called us to love. Lord, bless us like only you can. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, in our uh, opening hymn. Our opening hymn uh, comes from hymn number 408, The Gift of Love, The Gift of Love. Amen.
praise God from whom all blessings flow, the gift of love. That is a wonderful old hymn, and I won't say it. Yes, I will. I love that song. That is beautiful, man. That is beautiful. One of our Methodist hymnals. My brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, uh, a different world is what we're talking about this morning. And we're talking from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, and we've talked about this letter before. We've talked about it in the last few weeks, but there is a question that looms uh, from this particular passage, and it says, how many of us know what true love really is? We talk about love. We talk about it all the time. As a matter of fact, I believe the Bible talks more about love than any other topic in, in all of the, the pages of the Holy Writ. We say this sometimes, and, and I've said it myself, we, we love this thing or we love that thing. I love my car. I love my, 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 my wife. I, and we say all of this, and we, we, we tend to lump love in, in all in the same categories, the way that we love and how we love and who we love. I understand the, the terminology that we're simply saying we have an emotional attachment to this or that, or to someone. You want to know what I believe uh, is uh, happening in and through our world? I believe that the church, the body of Christ, because we're responsible for holding the world together. God sustains the world because of the church. I believe what's happening in the world in many instances, and this is my own belief, my own philosophy, that the world could be a different world if the church would practice what they preach. If the church would practice love, if the church would practice the kind of love that the Bible is describing here in 1 Corinthians. Few of us have experienced the kind of love, my sisters and brothers in Christ, that Paul is putting forth in this particular passage. We tend to love in degrees. That's what I believe. If you do this for me, then I'll do that for you. If you provide this for me, then I'll provide that for you. In our faith community, in our faith, the kind of love that Paul is describing in the scriptures here, it's not a dream. It's not pie in the sky. It is literally a promise of God. Love uh, begins, of course, with God. The Bible submits to us that God is love. And we are called as believers in Christ, as the church, as the body of Christ, we are called to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our minds, and with all our strength. In our lesson today, the Apostle Paul gives the Corinthian church and us a lesson in love. He gives us this, this whole idea, this whole understanding of how to make a different world, how to create a different world. If you recall, the Corinthian church was struggling. They were struggling in their relationships. They were struggling in how to take care of one another. They were struggling how to handle their spiritual gifts. They were struggling. And Paul writes this letter to, to get them to, to understand that he insisted that there was a quality, there was a quality of life, there was a, a, a quality of life that is better than a spiritual gift. And that quality of life, he, he says to them and to us, is love. And right away, I want to define that kind of love that Paul is talking about. He is talking about not, not eros and not, not a starge and not a phileo. He's talking about agape love, the kind of love that Christ demonstrated to us by giving his life on the cross, the kind of love that God demonstrated to us by sending Jesus. While the Bible says, while we were yet still enemies, Christ died for us. And that kind of love, my sisters and brothers in Christ, is agape it is kind of love that says we love for no reason. And I believe that if the church, if the body of Christ, if those of us who name the name of Jesus, I believe if we would practice this kind of love that we would have a different world. That we would literally turn the world upside down for the cause of Christ. The Corinthian church messed up in all of their, their understandings messed up in all of their, their, their challenges with, with life and how to use their spiritual gifts. 
And the Apostle Paul stops by and he writes to us today, here is, how, here is how I see it. Here is how I believe the Lord has given it to me. He says this in verse 1 of chapter 13. If I speak in tongues of humanity, of human, or of angels, but do not have love, do not have agape love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the ability, in other words, to speak every kind of language in the world, if I have the ability to be able to go so deep into the languages that I could speak an angelic language, if I have that ability but I don't have this love, this agape love, if I don't have the ability, the behavior to love for no reason, then he says, I am nothing. He says, if I have the gift of prophecy, and if I can fathom all the mysteries of the world, if I have all the knowledge, if I can solve all the world problems, if I can, if I can demonstrate to the world around me how to get rid of this COVID, this, this COVID environment that we're in, if I can demonstrate to the world around me how to solve cancer, if I can demonstrate to the world around me how to, to cure every disease on the face of the earth, and he says, but I have not love, I am nothing. He says, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I might boast, but I do not have this agape love, I gain nothing. Sometimes we profess, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we profess as members of the body of Christ, as, as members of the church, we profess to love one another. We profess to love the church. We profess to love all sorts of things, but it's not demonstrated. It's not carried over in our lives. The Bible submits to us this. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God who they have never seen. Paul helps us to understand the characteristics of a true Christian love the characteristics of true Christian love. And he gives us this in, in verses 4 through 6. He gives us this whole idea of, of here are some positive descriptions of the nature of love, and here are some negatives that love does not do. And it would help us as the body of Christ, it would help us as the church if we demonstrated this in and through our lives. If every member of the body of Christ would say to themselves, hey, listen, I'm going to practice what, what, what it says here in chapter 13 of the First Corinthian church, the letter to the First Corinthian church. Verse 4, it says this, love is patient and love is kind. And then he says this to us, that uh, here are eight negative things that love should never do, that love does not do as members of the body of Christ. It ought to be evident in our lives. He says love does not envy. Don't get jealous over people. I don't care about what uh, this person has and, and this person does not have. I don't get jealous over that stuff, material things. He said, love does not envy. Love does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongdoing. Like a record keeper, like a bookkeeper. It says, love does not delight in evil but it rejoices with the truth. Love unites with the truth because when, when good things are happening, we rejoice, in other words. We look forward to wrongs being uh, overcome. He helps us in these negatives because he says to us that this is a picture, my sisters and brothers in Christ, of what love looks like. This is a picture of the action of love. And if these things are, are, are not happening, if these things are happening, in other words, then it says, hey, listen, listen, we might not be loving in the right way. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It's not dishonor. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. Keeps no record of wrongdoing. Does not delight in evil. Paul continues to... Uh, break this down for us, and he breaks it down, and I love this about the Apostle Paul because he breaks it down in bite-sized pieces that all of us ought to be able, as the body of Christ, to understand this. Now, get this. He is not writing this letter to the world. 
He's writing this to the church, to the Corinthian church, to Trinity United Methodist Church, and a demonstration as to how we can have a different world. He says in verse 7, here is what love looks like. Here's what truly Christian love looks like. It always protects and always trusts, always hopes and always perseveres. It always protects or it shelters others. So we, we have this covenant group, my sisters and brothers in Christ. I have several covenant groups that I, I have people in my life that I need to talk with because I need, I need them. They need me. We, we need one another. And in one of our covenant groups, we wrote a, 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 a statement of faith that said we were going to protect one another. We were going to guide, guard one another's relationships, that we were going to shelter one another. That's what that word means. It always protects. It always trusts or has faith in others. See, I believe this, my sisters and brothers in Christ, if we as the body of Christ, as we as the church, were practicing what it says here in 1 Corinthians 13, I believe this, that we would have a different world and that the church would be turning the world upside down for the cause of Christ because it says that we have faith in others. Even when something doesn't look right in someone's life, even when something is not going right in someone's life, as the body of Christ, as members of the body of Christ, we ought to be willing to roll up beside that person and say, hey, listen, I got you. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to help you. I'm not going to talk about you. I'm not going to say, I knew that they couldn't do it. I knew they weren't capable of the doing it. It says, it always hopes, has hope in people. It always perseveres or endures. He continues with this, and he says to us in verses 8 through 13, here's the good news. Good news is always, remember my sisters and brothers in Christ, we say this, good news in the scriptures is always what God is doing and never what we are doing. It's always what God is doing and never what we are doing. If you recall our conversation last week about the spiritual gifts and the spiritual gifts not being uh, self-seeking or, or self-serving and the spiritual gifts being beneficial to the local church or the spiritual gifts being beneficial to the congregation, Paul leaves us in chapter 12 and verse 31 and he says this, Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And he says, And I yet will show you a most excellent way. In other words, he's saying, hey, there is a better path of life than, than spiritual gifts, than seeking spiritual gifts. There is a better path in life than, than seeking to display spiritual gifts. And that better path in life is to seek love. And that love, my sisters and brothers, is love that has been given to us by God. And that love, my brothers and sisters in Christ, according to the Apostle Paul, that agape love will never fail. When everything else around us is failing, when everything else around us has come to an end, he says to us that this particular love, love in verse 8, never fails. And he says where there is prophecy, where there are spiritual gifts, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it, it'll pass away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part will disappear. And he finishes this piece up and he says, uh, when, when I was a child, verse 11, when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put away childhood, childish things behind me. I put away that foolishness. In other words, my sisters and brothers in Christ, he says, none of us, when we come into a relationship with Jesus as members of the body of Christ, none of us remain the same. And if we've come into a relationship with Jesus, if we are in a right relationship with Jesus, we ought to be able to take the love, the agape love that God has demonstrated in and through Jesus Christ, the agape love that God has demonstrated in and through our lives. We ought to be able to take that agape love as believers in Christ Jesus, as Christians, and apply it to the world around us. We ought to be able to apply it in the church that we might have a different world. He says this, in verse 13, he says this for us. And now these three remain, faith, 
faith is always around. We have faith in God. God has faith in us. Hope. Hope should always be around. We, we, we should always have hope, my sisters and brothers in Christ. We, we should never be, be to the point in our lives where we, we are so hopeless that we can't make it. Not the body of Christ, not the members of the church, not those who have been loved by God. And then he says this, and love. But the greatest of these is love unconditional love, where we love for no reason, inevitably will create a different world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we sing a uh, hymn of praise, and I, I call it our hymn of praise. I've tagged it our hymn of praise because once we have, have, have shared together in God's word, once we have given the gospel according to uh, uh, God, we, we ought to have a, a, a way of praising. And so we come together and we sing. Let's sing hymn number 384, Love Divine, a Love Excelling. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. What a wonderful uh, hymn that is. Let us affirm our faith, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Our affirmation of faith is the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quickened and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue to share my sisters and brothers in Christ in our offering, and we uh, are overjoyed that God has given us the ability to give. We say this again and again repeatedly. We say that the Lord blesses us so that we can give. He gives to who God can give through. And so at Trinity United Methodist Church here, if you are a member of the church, you are under an obligation to give to support this local church. And so we ask that you would send your gifts of tithes and offerings to Trinity United Methodist Church, Attention Financial Secretary, P.O. Box 155, King George, Virginia, 22485. If you're not a member of Trinity, but you love to give to us, we will absolutely bless God for your giving. And so you can send them to the same address. Or if you'd like to give, if you're a person of electronic means, and you'd like to give online, we have an electronic portal by which you can give. Just simply go to www.trinitykg.org and you will find a link, a portal to give electronically. Amen? So we bless God for your giving. Let us share in a doxology that we might pray to God and give God thanks for our gifts of tithes and offerings. Amen? <laughs> God from whom all blessings flow. My sisters and brothers in Christ, we share as United Methodists in uh, this spot in the service what we call joys and concerns. And joys and concerns is exactly what it says. If you have a joy, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to know about it, whether it's an anniversary or birthday, uh, whatever the joy is, we love to hear from you. This week we had a joy in that our 27-year-old uh, daughter turned 28. So she went from 27 to 28. I still say they're young people, man. 28 years old. I remember when I was 28. I won't go down that road, but she turned 28 years old uh, on the 26th of January, and we were overjoyed that uh, we called her, my, my darling wife and I, and we sang happy birthday to her. Uh, we did it. Uh, I was driving in, and my, my wife was uh, driving in her car, and we literally hooked up together and sang happy birthday. That was a joy of ours. And so we uh, did that. But the joy and concerns would be, uh, if you have a concern, let us know. We're here. We're a church that believe that we can meet every single need that you may have. We'll support you from the cradle. I won't say it. But send us your joys and concerns. You can send them here to us. Email them to trinitykg at verizon.net or you can send them directly to me. And I love hearing from you. I hear from folk from time to time at Kevin Elmore at VAUMC.org so that we can continue to connect with one another. Amen? Let's pray. Gracious God, you bless us all the day long. You're the giver and sustainer of life. There is nothing that happens to us or through uh, us in our lives that you're not aware of. We believe that your love is demonstrated in our lives each and every second of the day. Lord, bless us as a people, as a body of Christ. Bless us that we might be a blessing. The joys that we have, uh, birthdays and anniversaries, uh, the, the celebrations that we have of a new birth, all of these things take place in our lives because you remind us that teach us to number our days and while we are here, we should enjoy life. God, we love you. We praise you and give you glory for those things that are, are concerns of ours. Our loved ones being sick and members being in the hospital and all of those things, we're asking God that you would have your way, that you would bring healing and wholeness wherever that is necessary, that you would bring healing and wholeness, whether it's spiritual or physical or emotional, we're asking God that you would show up and act out in our lives. Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor, for we love you. 
not because uh, we're the, the chosen or we're the elect. We love you because you first loved us. We say this prayer that unites us together each Sunday. And so we share our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you will join with us, my sisters and brothers in Christ, in our closing hymn. Our closing hymn is another great United Methodist hymn. No, hymn. It is hymn number 373, Nothing Between. Amen? Amen. is so beautiful. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. Our closing prayer, my sisters and brothers in Christ, and we believe this, that a prayer that we close, the benediction as we sometimes call it, is a prayer of praising God and it is also a blessing of the people. Let us pray. We praise you, Almighty God, for the gift of your everlasting love. We thank you this morning that you are able to uh, share with us that agape love and that we as believers, we as your children are able to share that same agape love with one another and the world around us. Creator God, love us by your spirit and your power. Help us to always show that same love that you demonstrated to us through Jesus Christ in and through our lives and to the world around us. Bless us with your power. We give you glory, praise, and honor for this day and for this time together. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.